How's it going, guys? It's Poetry Sun, and welcome back to the episode of the Dutch Return Campaign in European Universalis 4. I gotta admit, it's been about like a week since I last recorded. I have been a little stressed lately with uh, a lot of schoolwork going on. Uh, I'm doing fine, just, you know, it's, it's that time of the year where schoolwork really starts to pick up. Uh, so... I have been not. I have not been able to record. Uh, so as a result, as is usual, as is normal when that happens, I have not been able to keep fresh in my mind really what is going on here. Uh, so we're gonna have to figure that out now. I don't really remember anything that was happening. <laughs> um, hmm. We are. I think we're about to annex you soon, right? Let's actually. Might be a good idea to do that. Um, I know, I realize what we're doing right now, of course. Uh, we are at war with Lubeck, feeding land to Hamburg, Hamburg. But uh, beyond that, I don't remember at all what was going on. Uh, and so, I do apologize for that. It'll take me, you know, it's going to take me a second. But uh, but after that second, I should be good to go. That's the, the idea, at least. Uh, in fact, I think I might want to come over here and try to stop you from getting the siege. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> I'll go ahead and update with you guys on what's been going on with me. So the reason I've been a little like stressed out and sort of overloaded is because uh, you know it's it's getting close to midterm season. I haven't had well, so I actually no, I did have one midterm that was actually a a video project and um and, and that was kind of annoying actually. Um, the instructions weren't very clear. And that's the worst when you have a project, the instructions, especially like a midterm, something that has a quite a big impact on your grade. And you feel like the instructions are very clear, so you don't know what you're doing. Uh, that's always unfortunate. Uh, I then had a another like big assignment, not a midterm, but it's like a third of our grade for a different class. And that was also pretty not great uh, in terms of instructions. Uh, it was, it's for a public relations class, right? So. I don't know if anyone, if any of you have ever had a public relations class before, but uh, this class is sort of like a theoretical theore theory class, uh, sort of like basically an intro to to public relations, uh, principles of public relations is what it's called. It basically is like, let's go over the basics of what public relations is and how you should do research uh, that you then base like campaigns or you know press re how to write press releases stuff like that and we have a lab component with which we or in which we uh we do practice like writing uh practice and here's the thing is that uh, i i love the professor for the class she is actually awesome i think i might i might have talked about her in a in a different video it's i have no problem with the professor at all she's awesome uh let me i'll just give you an idea of how awesome she is like, like, and I'm not saying this highly, she's actually, like, she's more than just awesome, awesome. she's badass. <laughs> and you may be like, what, what do you mean? This professor, oh, they're probably gonna go attack my army, we should get up there. <clears throat> uh, this professor, uh, in her, she, she's from India. She started off being a engineering, I believe, major? An engineering, some, like, a STEM thing, um... Oh yeah, that, that army's dead. Uh, some STEM thing that she did. Uh, I think it was engineering, but I don't remember what exactly it was. Um, so that's what she started off doing uh, in college. She got a, a master's, I guess it was, in that, in something along those, uh, along those lines. However, then she pivoted and did uh, Communica communications for her PhD. She did like, well, she actually did them both together. She did like communications in science, which is pretty cool. Um, pretty unique, you know. But that is not the. So, so, uh, so here's the thing is like, you know, there's obviously a, a stereotype that exists about like people from India, like when they're in the US, it's always like, you know, they're like the science majors and stuff. Um, but uh, but she is like really varied in where Tonda that's in the Philippines, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, we already have that dealt with. She is super like interesting because she actually won the national gold medal in the national competition for kickboxing. Um, 
for for women's kickboxing, I guess. Um, but uh, but yeah, like for the whole country of India, um, which is just crazy. <laughs> um, she also so she's like a kickboxer. Beyond that, right now her hobby. Uh, she told us this on the first day of class. Her hobby right now, is, she, she also has like a, a black black belt in like another discipline. I don't remember which uh, martial art it is, but she it, it might have been taekwondo, but I don't remember. I don't, re yeah, I, I don't remember. Um, <clears throat> however, she also has uh, a hobby right now where she is she actually has been taking classes on how to smith swords, on how to smith blades, in a forge. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming it's a more modern forge, because those dudes, there's more, you know, modern era forges. But still, like, that's, that's, that's badass. Like, who, who does that? Who actually does that? The, no one does, no one does that in, in a good way. I mean, like, like, it's, it's so unique, you know. Um, oh, yeah, definitely do that. Get out of here. Get here, Bohemia. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, she also, but but yeah, so I, I I she's actually just like a an awesome professor. Like she's super cool, super fun, super engaged all, at all times. Uh, but this assignment was not really very well explained to us um, because essentially she teaches the class part, and another teacher also teaches a different uh, class that is the same. Uh, and so they decided to clump, or to put the labs into one big lab with, uh, the other teacher, the other professor teaching both parts. And that's actually totally fine. He is also a really cool guy, and I feel like has a good grip on the material and what we need to know, and teaches it pretty well. However, uh... It me the only downside is that the assignments haven't necessarily lined up super well between the lab because his class is paced differently. Um, and with that, then that is where I've had that's where I had an issue. And I think a lot of other people had the issue have had their issues with the um, with the exam or the not the exam the the project that we had because uh, essentially the project was sort of like hey he write a press release for a major company about an event or a uh, or a product or a crisis or anything um, and we didn't we haven't really done any practice with anything like that for uh, for the class uh, in the class uh, or even in the in the lab part so it was a little bit jarring I guess would be the right word to, to all of a sudden have to be like uh, okay well here let's uh, you know put yourself in the shoes of this of a company like this um, in a way that you haven't ever practiced before explicitly. Um, and that sort of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. But, uh, again, I, I, uh, the professor is awesome, and, uh, we talked to her about that at the beginning of class, me and a couple of students, and I think she is taking that into consideration, so, you know. Um, okay, tell you what, we should take you guys down to here, because we have an opportunity uh, but yeah, so that's one thing. The video was for my Spanish class, the video project for my midterm for my other class. It's for Spanish. Um, and the professor for that class, <laughs> I think I actually talked about this before. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did in a different episode of this series. She actually is also pretty cool, but I think also has a little bit of unrealistic expectations for what the class, what happened, what we should learn, and what our takeaways from the class should be uh and i think there's also like i don't know why this is not her fault at all or anything like that but there's a wide variance in the level of spanish in the class because here's the thing um i i am certainly not um the the most I'm, I'm certainly not completely fluent um i would never like i never tried to say that i'm completely fluent uh how i i were bleh. however i would say that i am i am fluent i, I would say like I can speak to someone and generally know what I'm saying. There's a lot, one thing I'm awful at um, is vocab. I'm actually really bad with like uh, knowing just random words. Like, uh, let's see, what's a word I don't know right now? I'm looking around my desk to see like, um, no, I guess I know most of the stuff on my desk right now. Like, I don't know, post-it note? <laughs> 
<laughs> that's kind of a weird thing anyways, though, so I guess I'll get cut myself some slack on that. But still, um, like, in general, I think that, uh, I, I would consider myself fluent, um, but I certainly am not, like, uh, I don't know everything. No one does. No, even I don't know everything in English, you know. Uh, so, so I think, you know, n no one is ever going to know everything about any, any language. Um, and it's pretty fair to say. But basically my point is, I, I think I am fluent in Spanish to the level where I can call myself fluent comfortably. That's the big thing. Um, however, some of the other students in, in our class are not as fluent. And I... I don't mean to pass, I'm not trying to pass any judgment upon them. In fact, that was a big topic for like two or three videos in a row. Where I was talking about like how I don't think it's right to judge people for like what language they're learning or anything like that. I don't pass any judgment at all. In fact, I like the fact that they might not be as fluent and are, and are taking a 400 level class is, uh, is all, it makes it all the more like, uh, you know, like impressive and like, and like it's good that they're challenging themselves. Um, however, like, so the, uh, as an example, though, for my, hmm, uh, before this midterm, we had to do these group or partner speeches uh, in class. There's a lot of like speaking as part of the class. It's professional communication is the class. Um, so my my partner and I did our presentation. It looked good on paper, like on the presentation uh, part of it. It looked pretty good. I was like, yeah, this is I'm comfortable with this. Um, however, when we got up there, I think. <laughs> My, uh, my partner is is not as fluent, um, again. I don't want to, uh, not passing any judgment. Uh, so I think she, she had a hard time, even though she knew what she wanted to say. And I think she, I think she could say it. I think she had the knowledge. I think she just kind of got a little, a little jumbled up. Because it happens to everyone. It happens to the best of us. Uh, and so I kind of had to step in to help her out. Uh, help her, like, sort of, uh, speak out what she's trying to say. Um... And then the, but then the professor was kind of like, I don't know, uh, I don't know, like basically like uh, asking her what she meant, and and I think that kind of like uh, made her more nervous and, and stuff. But but beyond that, the uh, oh my god, so many rebels. Hynushin. Okay, so here we go. Uh, you go do with those you to deal with these Shilabitos and Hainishin Oh my god, they're gonna go into <laughs> they're gonna go into Burgundy, that's amazing, I love it Um But yeah, um, and this is not the first time this has happened in their class, uh, in fact, there was actually uh, and this is what I'm pretty hard to talk about for, there was actually a moment in the first present like a uh, partner presentation uh, that was like a, a couple weeks before when me and my partner went um, there was a moment where, where the professor literally made this one girl cry, and I felt so bad, because, like, I think the girl was giving it her all, it's just she, she's not as fluent, and, uh, and, and it came across, um, like, uh, you know, like, saying stuff that is, uh, really not grammatic, like, it just doesn't make sense grammatically, um, to the point where it takes away from the, the narrative of the presentation, because, if you don't know a word and you have to, and this is the thing that I, uh, when I, when I had a, um, when I had my class last spring, a year ago, the professor, one thing that she did really well, I think, that I don't think always is necessarily done well, is that we had to, we had to present a couple times in that class, and she, if you made mistakes, she would literally stop you uh she would literally stop you right after that sentence and be like no no you say it like this or no 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 it's written like this because we had presentations as well uh, visual rep you know audio visual aids she's like no 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 Here, here's how you do it you say it like this um and that was really helpful it basically uh you know it, but the the fact the thing that differed is that it wasn't like all at once like you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. It's throughout the presentation. And if you did, for instance, if you had a repeating like theme that you mistyped on one slide and then it was mis, you know, misspelled or 
uh, whatever on the next <clears throat> as well. It's not like she's gonna take off double. It's not like she's gonna stop it again to criticize you. She just like nods and says, you know, like, because uh, she knows you already you got the message at this point. Um, and and I think that was a really good way of doing it. Um, <clears throat> and beyond that, she would. She, she made it very clear the first time she ever did that to one of the, the students. Um, she made it clear because she could tell that the reaction... Oh my god, Sweden is the new emperor. Huh, interesting. She made it very clear that she did not mean to offend us with it. She's like, I'm just doing this to help you. Um, and that really, really helped. What, did Bohemia get like... Okay, no, they're not in a PU, luckily. Uh, but yeah, so she was like, this is... Um, this is just to help you, and it and it did help a lot. It helped a great deal, um, but it was in the way that she did it. It was very like you know, positive, like you know, not really trying to tear you down. Um, hey, La Plata, hey, let's go, Argentine, Rio Platense, yeah, let's go. All right, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wonder if Burgundy's just gonna pop out high high nut. <laughs> I know it's high new or something like that, but um But yeah, so the way this this professor this other professor I went the way she went about it was really, really good, I, I thought. Um This professor, it's much more like with this girl at least, it was much it was a lot more brutal. It was a lot more like uh <laughs> I don't I don't even know how to <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it. It was just like um, very like harsh, like all at once at the end of the presentation. Or actually, it wasn't with this one girl that she like made cry. It wasn't even at the end of the presentation. It was basically like she stopped it and was like, it was like, hold on, before we go any further, I just got you know I gotta say this, which I, I totally understand why she did it. I just think it could have been done in perhaps a better manner, because she she was basically like, hey, uh, here is. What you need to do better. Um, you aren't really making any sense with your points. Your argument, even if it wasn't in Spanish, wouldn't make any sense. And it was just like, it was just like nonstop. I think the other thing was that I don't think she meant it personally uh, because this was the first group that had gone. And I think that with that, she was trying to do this as an example to sort of be like, I know that all of you probably are going to have this issue, so try to cut it out now while you can. And, and it, but I just felt. I still though just felt so bad for this girl because this girl started like crying like you could tell she was she was keeping it together it's not like she was like you know bawling but she was very clearly like holding back tears and like just tearing up and it was it was just brutal and I was like oh my god um I I the whole class was just silent too it was it was brutal um but no I mean it's uh <laughs> the the class has been certainly certainly interesting. That's that's for sure. So I think this is what we're gonna take from Lubeck. I don't really care to be at war with her for too long. I don't want our coalition to be too big. Um, so yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's so that's that class. <laughs> interesting times, so. huh? Uh, I'm just looking around. Thumbed Hamburg, Hamburg, yeah. Oh, what happened there? Pomerania just got popped out of us somehow. Not sure why. Interesting though. Um, yeah. Let's let's come back down to here. Oh. And come back down to here. Come back down to here. Oh yeah yeah. Selective breeding. Nice. Okay. Um. Yeah. What are we? What are we gonna do? We need to go to war with France at some point in time. They're allied with La Plata and the Mamluks. Not that bad. They lost their alliance with Bohemia. I think we should go to war with France pretty soon. Um. They're. They, it's. This is getting out of hand now. There's one bigger one of them. You know. Um. Star Wars memes. Um. We've taken administrative ideas, right? Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, we have, but they're not done yet. Not even close to being done yet. So I think... What was my... What were my plans? I think I was partially... Part of it was I was wanting to go to war with, like, the Mamluks, right? 
pretty sure that was part of it. Um, for but they are allied to France. That's right. Hmm, I just looked at that. Um, oh yeah, that's right. I was also working on the Somalian areas, like yeah, like Warsangali, Mara, Mamluks, and Ajaran. Ajaran. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I remember that now. Um, I think I was pretty set on making Somali a promoted culture and then making the Gulf of Aden another one of our like heavy trade emphasis spots, um, which I, I think is a pretty good idea. <clears throat> I don't know. I Yeah, I mean, I think that's what I was going to do. I just got to remember what ex my exact plans were. It was going to be like, take over War Sangali, then move up into Mamluk land, I think. Something like that. That was here. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to have to figure that out. Uh, we're going to have to figure that out in a second. Probably would be fine to do that. Yeah, I mean... And Makua, that's right. Mm, we got to figure out what to do with a little Makua over here. I'm going to take these guys back. Uh huh. That's... That's really not good. Wait, hold on. Before you click the button, anything we can take? No. No? Okay. Um, what were we gonna do? Let's see. Hmm. Uh, well, no, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go and wrap up this episode here, um, so that I can have time to record more, because it is actually, like, past midnight here, and it's a school night, so, uh, so yeah, I'm going to end it here, but thank you guys for watching, please go to leave a like and subscribe for it, and I should see you guys tomorrow with another one, Bye bye